Uh, Stefania Vasconez was born in Ecuador and moved to the United States at the age of 10. She grew up in Grand Junction and graduated from Colorado State University with a BA in psychology. Shortly after, she moved to Los Angeles where she became increasingly passionate about philanthropy, phil philanthropy through her volunteer work at a houseless shelter on Skid Row. Traveling the world prior to the pandemic helped her recognize the interconnectedness of the human experience, and she knew the next chapter of her life would need to be socially impactful. She has spent the last two years community organizing in Grand Junction and founded Mutual Aid Partners as a response to the rising community needs due to the COVID-19 pandemic. With Stephanie's leadership and engagement as executive director, Mutual Aid Partners as a grassroots network that connects community partners and other nonprofits with resources and volunteers, supported up to 500 families weekly suffering from food insecurity during the peak of the pandemic. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker, Stephanie Vazconez. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> I have not been to church in a very long time, um, and I can definitely feel the love in this room and didn't think I would kind of get that sense of a little bit of overwhelming, um, lots of energy. and what the UU has meant to mutual aid, I cannot even express in words um, as you have supported us since the beginning, allowing us to hold the mutual aid distribution in the parking lot every single week. You have no idea how much that has meant to us and to our community. So I'm very, very grateful to all of you, to all the support, to the UUs um, for all your energy and your love. <clears throat> So I did a TED talk last year um, about mutual aid. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. So the title was, May I Borrow a Cup of Sugar? The Rebuilding of Community Through Mutual Aid. Remember back in the day when you could walk over to your neighbor's house and ask to borrow a cup of sugar. You could say that as a society, we stopped doing things like this long before the pandemic and that relying on our neighbors, on each other really, was no longer commonplace. The pandemic has brought about many hardships to our community. However, it has also presented the opportunity to organize and to rebuild that intangible sense of human connection. I strongly believe in the power of perception. Our realities can be very different but our ability to perceive things positively can be learned. I came across a few articles that refer to the coronavirus pandemic as the great pause. How I perceive it, it forced us to isolate and ultimately pause our lives. And it gave us the gift of time, a time to assess and a time to truly focus on what matters to us perhaps even a time to find purpose. Crisis has the ability to bring about creativity, innovation, and collaboration, all components of mutual aid. A movement you may have heard about as tens of thousands of mutual aid networks have sprouted up all over the world this past year. They focus on the concept of solidarity, not charity on cooperation rather than competition, on working together, yet celebrating the individual skill sets of, to help us all thrive. Mutual aid may be new to you, but the concept is legendary. The earliest account I could find dated back to the summer of 1793, when a brutal yellow fever epidemic hit Philadelphia, half of the city fled but the Free African Society, one of the first mutual aid networks in the country, 
rallied the Black community to offer relief to the sick, shelter orphans, and transport and bury the dead. The effort cost many of them their lives. Yet the work continued past the pandemic as neighbors saw the value in feeding, housing, protecting, and caring for one another. Then throughout the 19th century, Black women were the powerful drivers of mutual aid efforts, establishing scholarship funds, daycares, night schools, and fundraising by holding bake sales, selling crafts, and pooling what little money they had to fuel the work. Their actions were visionary seeds and the foundation love. So how does mutual aid work today? Here's something you probably do remember, the great toilet paper shortage of 2020. <laughs> Scientists and historians will probably be puzzled by this conundrum for centuries, don't you think? All of a sudden, cleaning supplies flew off the shelf, certain food staples went missing, and restaurants had to shut their doors. Employees were being laid off, and people were getting sick, so we became afraid. Social media was being utilized in other capacities to provide a platform for communities that wanted to help each other, be it through marketplaces, communication during the BLM protests, and even support during natural disasters. While most of us worried, a Facebook group in the small city of Grand Junction, Colorado was being created, led by long-term activist Jacob Richards. The Grand Junction mutual aid seed was planted. And what sprouted from this grassroots organization was a beautiful collaboration of community members. They were action-driven and wanted to focus on solutions, not problems. Shortly after the mutual aid food distribution was established, it would quickly become a platform for the exchange of resources between neighbors. A safe haven that allowed activists, teachers, moms and dads, college students, retired veterans, and even the unsheltered to work together, to give and to receive, to share in our common humanity during a time of great division. Through mutual aid, we feel we're in a better position to better understand the needs of our community, and therefore we're able to evolve with them in real time. As a new community resource that was created organically to fill a gap that had been there all along, mutual aid is committed to working alongside our neighbors so that we can all move forward together. Last summer, we collaborated with organizations like Vote Positive Colorado, who helped people register to vote as well as track their stimulus checks. Grand Valley Peace and Justice, who provided resource navigation and assistance with documents like driver's licenses, birth certificates, union station cuts, and a modern man's barber shop, who gives free haircuts and barber services. Barclays Hope, who provides complimentary shots to at-risk dogs and cats. We also had Medicare specialists, veteran services, and the most amazing volunteers donating their precious time to help however and whenever they could. On a weekly basis, we're assisting people from all walks of life, from college students to hardworking community members, to seniors at long-term care facilities, to our precious war veterans, and even the unhoused who have lost almost everything. The stories that we hear are a combination of heartbreak and hope. Neighbors that have never had to ask for help before are finding themselves with a desperate need to reach out to their community because they were laid off from their jobs due to the pandemic. Single mothers that can't afford to buy baby food until the end of the week. Retired folks that felt isolated, heard about mutual aid, and now are part of our volunteer family. So why does mutual aid work? I believe that it is human instinct to care for one another. The survival of the human race depends on the symbiotic relationship between our natural resources and each other. It works because of the beautiful humans that volunteer each week. It works because it has to. Sorry. <laughs> 
Well, I hope that you're inspired. <laughs> so where do we go from here? We grow organically and in solidarity with our community. We embrace the concept of adapting in a fast paced world and we focus on eliminating barriers. We evolve with the needs of our community. We create a new kind of nonprofit organization, one that will support and fuel the fire of grassroots groups by providing accessibility to resources. The kind of organization with a non hierarchical structure that strives to listen to everyone equally. The kind of organization that is action driven and focused on solutions, on partnerships and networks rather than competition. And we called it Mutually Partners. <laughs> this is happening right now every week in our backyard, here in your parking lot. <laughs> we need people like you and I to bring new ideas to the table, to help us connect on a basic human level so that we may rebuild that sense of community we're all craving right now. So thank you again for having me. Um, again, just, I, it just warms my heart every time that I think of a volunteers and um, the, the TED talk actually incorporated videos from the volunteers um, when we asked them about what mutually meant to them. And it was a, a beautiful collage of just people like really did find purpose and coming and really did find that connection and met people that they typically would not be interacting with. So um, if you're able to come out on Tuesdays, we're here from 10 to one every Tuesday and just come experience the amazing positive energy and the environment of being, it feels like a farmer's market out there. Um, we have music playing and just any anything that you'd want to do, um, we are there to support you. So um, again, thank you so much for all of your time and for having me today. Thank you. Well, it says on my list here to invite conversation. So I guess we'll invite some conversation. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Stephania regarding her um, partnership? I personally have been out on Tuesdays and it is um, an amazing network of people and very well oiled. I just wanted to thank Stephania for all the wonderful work she's done. It's, it's really amazing 
what mutual aid has done and and the job that she's done and the energy she she pours forth and it, it's it's easy to see the passion she has for for building community and 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 the the love that she shares in in that in that regard so thank you stephania And I'll say that I've been at the um, Tuesday morning thing um, events uh, some this summer and fall, and they really um, are well organized and heartwarming. Uh, and I really appreciated hearing Stephanie talk about mutual aid and especially um, explaining to us what's different about mutual aid from other nonprofits. That was interesting to me. So. because I'm not sure those of us who've been around on Tuesday are aware of, of yeah. all the other stuff other than on Tuesday what you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um so as I mentioned, Grand Junction Mutual Aid uh, as a grassroots group uh, has there's a Facebook group that has over 14,000 members and there are just different little projects that community members have come together to organize autonomously. Um, and so when we um, when we first, when well, after the pandemic first uh, started and I decided to form mutual aid partners, I was kind of just um, joining as many Zoom groups uh, to figure out who was doing what in the community and kind of where we fit. Um, and so uh, the Mesa County Health Department uh, was in a call when there was an outbreak within the houseless population and said, we need help. Um, and a lot of organizations were limiting their hours and closing down. Um, as you all know, people didn't really know what, what COVID was and how, you know, how much it was gonna spread. And, and so, um, so a lot of organizations wanted to provide the resources and um, money to help, uh, but nobody wanted to be on site. And so when they asked, here's, here's what we're thinking we're going to do. We need to quarantine our houseless neighbors that have nowhere to go. Um, and so they did that in, in motels and then uh, Homeward Bound made the meals and then they needed somebody to be on site to deliver the meals. And so I kind of raised my hand in the Zoom call and said, mutually I will do it. And um, we had an incredible team of volunteers that partnered with Mesa County Public Health uh, with Homeward Bound and other organizations and of course the UU um, throughout this to do meal deliveries for I, I was there probably every single night for about three months and we had a um, we had to just start from scratch because none of us had ever really been through a pandemic before and and let alone organize um, a fee to 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 provide 70 plus, I think at one point it was 75 meals um, that we're doing to 75 people. Um, so that's um yeah it, it was it's like I kind of still like when I think about it I don't exactly know how we did it um but I it was just love and people just knowing like somebody had to do it and if uh, um and, you know Sonia if you if you all know Sonia Cardenas she is such an incredible rock star and um she is now on the board of directors of MAP and just I mean it just roll up your sleeves and what do we have to do and how do we work together to do it um because there's definitely we would not have been able to do it without the collaboration of all these organizations um and and I say that more I mean like the people in the organizations um that I just want to go above and beyond and and work together. So is that? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, and is there people like on the chat? Oh, okay. I just wanted to second um, what you're saying, Stefania. Um, I'm thinking back a year and a half and how we were all navigating that in this community and the birth of mutual aid partners and the growth in activity. I don't think this church has really ever been associated with something quite like uh, mutual aid partners. We've been associated with a number of different kinds of groups, but not like that. And it has been both an education for me and I think a source of joy as we've watched you grow 
and we've watched our relationship grow. Uh, Laurel Carpenter, our board president, is an executive with Mutual Aid Partners. Um, a number of our members are active with you and vice versa, really, you've been there for us in many different ways beyond just the Tuesday affairs. So it has been kind of an interesting and, and really passionate experience for all of us. I'm just really glad you're here for the second time. I think I remember your first talk, mm -hmm. um, which I was really moved by as well. And the fact that you keep going like a dynamo is somewhat amazing <laughs> to me. I don't know how you do it. Uh, it takes an enormous amount of dedication and energy to keep fueling this. And I've met Jacob Richards. He's a really neat guy. So it's a partnership among you folks, and it's a partnership with this congregation, which I think has been mutually beneficial. Thanks so much. Thank you. How I keep going, it's the it's the volunteers. It's the energy from the volunteers is our board. Jimmy Blevins is actually also on our board of directors. And I think he he definitely at the at the very beginning was one of the people that was incredibly supportive. And that when I had to just sit down and cry, he would be like, You got this. So thank you, Jimmy. That's how I do it. It's I sometimes I wake up and I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this again. I'm exhausted. And then I get here and I see the people that are waiting in the parking lot waiting to set up and just how everybody's just ready to just work together. And I just feed off of that energy, so. <laughs> and I should add, Jimmy, for the rest of you in the congregation, Jimmy Blevins is our facility coordinator. Um, so he's taken over that role, which again is another link between mutual aid partners and our congregation. Anyone else? Questions? Comments? Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you again, Stephania. Obviously, you're very passionate about what you do, and I think that is probably uh, the backbone of your organization, your passion, and and the people feed off of that. Yes, you have a question? Yeah. Is there information in written form about how you got started and what do you do? Is there can we get some of your message? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll let I'll put it in my app. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for those on Zoom, expect a bio on Stephania and her organization. Uh, probably in the next newsletter. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And our website too, mutuallypartners.org. We have pictures and uh, newspaper articles and, and all that kind of stuff uh, about it too. So. Mutuallypartners.org. Very good. Very good. Anything else? I guess we'll uh, share our final hymn then. Thanks, Angie, for being worship associate today. You did a good job. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, we've done the final hymn. Great. Okay. Let's see. We extinguish this flame, let not the light through you, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together. Oh, your way in peace. peace.
Okay, well, we invite everyone to stay and socialize with 